Hearthstone is a pretty old video game, 10 years old to be specific, and while new classes have been introduced to the game like Death Knight and Demon Hunter, over time some of the older classes have started to feel a bit stale. But that's all over now. You may have seen my series on trying to update some of Hearthstone's older classes, but today's video will be a little different. You see, a little while back a longtime viewer of mine left an interesting comment on one of my videos. They wrote, Make an ogre class, please. And that actually gave me an idea. Okay, this one's for you, friendly shadow. So in this video I'll be doing just that. Kinda. You see, I haven't made a single ogre class, but rather I've made an ogre subclass that all 11 classes can choose. So you can technically play 11 different ogre classes. Let me explain. When you're about to build a deck and you've reached the class selection screen, you'll now be presented with a bunch of new buttons next to each hero. These are the new ogre buttons and clicking one will ogrefy the related hero. And if you choose that hero, you'll now play as an ogre version of that class. You get to play as Gore the ogre and he will take on whatever class you choose. Other than that, ogrefying your hero only does a single thing, which is changing your hero power into an ogre version of that class's hero power. So what does an ogre hero power look like? In Hearthstone, ogres are a beloved group of characters. Everyone of course knows about the likes of both the Fist Ogre, which has the best stats for cost out of all the cards in Hearthstone, at least according to the custom Hearthstone subreddit. But a common theme among ogres in Hearthstone is their inability to deliver consistently good results. You see, ogres often have the 50% tag. 50% chance to attack the wrong target, 50% chance to give the wrong effect, you name it. And this 50% tag would also be the theme of these new ogre hero powers. Basically, ogrifying your hero power lets you play with the upgraded version of that class's hero power from the very start of the game, but the ogre hero powers all come with a downside. They will each have a 50% chance to do nothing and just waste your mana. Here are all the different hero powers. If you choose to ogrify the Death Knight class, you'd now play as Gore Death Knight, and your hero power would be Ogre Charge, which summons a 2-1 ghoul with charge that dies at the end of the turn for 2 mana, but it will also have a 50% chance to do nothing and just waste 2 mana. If you play as Gore Demon Hunter, you would get the hero power Ogre Claws, which gives your hero plus 2 attack this turn for 1 mana, but also has a 50% chance to do nothing. Gore Druid gets the hero power Ogre Shift, which gives your hero plus 2 attack this turn and 2 armor for 2 mana, but with a 50% chance to do nothing. Gore Hunter gets Ogre Shot, which will deal 3 damage to the enemy hero for 2 mana, but has a 50% chance to do nothing. Gore Mage gets Ogre Blast, which will deal 2 damage for 2 mana, but again has a 50% chance to do nothing. Gore Paladin gets my favorite of them all. Ogrean Force. This one will summon two 1 1 Silverhand recruits for two mana, but might just do nothing. Gore Priest gets Ogre Heal, which will restore four health for two mana, but with a 50% chance to do nothing. Gore Rogue gets Dagger Ogre, which will equip a 2 2 weapon, but has a 50% chance to do nothing. Gore Shaman gets Togur Temic Call which will summon two random basic totems for two mana, and again with a 50% chance to do nothing. Unlike the other ones, this is actually not the upgraded version of the Shaman Hero Power, since I feel that one really sucks. Gore Warlock has the Hero Power Ogre Tap, which will draw a card for two mana, but has a 50% chance to do nothing. And finally, Gore Warrior gives you Ogre Up, which will gain four armor for two mana, but like the other ones, this one also has a 50% chance to do nothing. If you manage to upgrade any of these hero powers, they will just give you the regular upgraded hero power of your class, without the 50% chance to do nothing. That's actually it for my overclass video. This one was for all the gamblers out there. But since this video is looking a little short, I'll share some quick ogre facts before we end. So if that's not something for you, you can just hop off now. And thanks for watching this far. But for those that stayed, here are a few facts about ogres. Ogres in the Warcraft universe come from the planet Draenor, which is now called Outland, just like the Orcs and for a while the Draenei. Speaking of Orcs, Ogres are actually the ancestors of the Orcs, and both Ogres and Orcs can trace the lineage back to the servants of the Titans, just like the humans, gnomes and dwarves of Azeroth. 
For a while, the ogres had the largest empire on Draenor and had forced the orcs into slavery. But this empire dwindled over time from orcish rebellions and the arrival of the Draenei, and eventually it was replaced by the orcish horde. Most ogres have one head, but some ogres are born with two heads, each with their own personality. This is usually seen as a sign of greatness, and these ogres often make excellent spellcasters. For a long time this was a rare event, but eventually the orc warlock Gul'dan, yes, the warlock hero from Hearthstone Gul'dan, found a way to mutate ogres into growing another head through magic. Well that's it for my ogre class video. I hope you had a good time and maybe you also learned a thing or two about ogres. If you like what you saw, give the video a like and hit the subscribe button for more custom Hearthstone content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.